All right, good afternoon, Taylor Street Church of Christ. We are so excited to give you some awesome news. We are going to be regathering on Sunday, May 24th at 10 a.m. Regathering, what's that word about? Well, regathering because we are, oh, we were never closed. Yeah, we were never closed. Because the church is not a building, it's a people. It's a people. And we are going to get to physically regather re on, May, on May 24th. We were never closed. And so um, if you cannot come, if you are in a high risk group, if for any reason in the world you cannot be here, we are still going to be coming on Facebook, yep. YouTube, YouTube. HobbsChurch.com, any way that you digitally have tuned in here. That is still going to be there for you. Yes, but on May 24th, in addition to what we've been doing, we're now going to offer regathering for those of you who are able to come here and feel comfortable to do that. Okay, so to be safe, we're going to do a few things. The first thing is, is that we will practice the recommended six feet of social distancing, and that does include your kids. So I have kids. Many of you have, have kids, they love to run around and play. We're going to try to keep them with us when we're here. That's right. So there are other precautions that we have taken and we want to make you aware of that. So before May 24th at 10 a.m., you'll have an idea of what to expect when you show up. So why don't we go inside and we'll talk a little bit more about those. Okay, we are here. Why don't you tell them what's the first thing to expect? Okay, the first thing is that worship is going to start at 10 a.m. We know that you're used to 9 because then we have class at, at 10, but worship is going to start at 10 a.m. That's right. We also are going to ask you to wear a mask. This is not just for your safety and your comfort, but it's also for the safety and comfort for those around us. If you don't have a mask, we will be able to provide you with one so that everybody can have a mask. All right, so the north doors that we just walked through and the south doors on that end will be available for you to come through, as well as the northwest doors that have the handicap ramp. So where do you want to park? Well, you can park where you normally do, that's fine, but you also may want to consider that if you're going to sit on the north side of the auditorium, it might be better to park on the north side of the building in the north parking lot. There's less traffic crossing in the foyer now. Yeah, and if you usually sit on the south, we encourage you, you might want to park on the south side. That's just, we're trying to help create a, a good flow uh, of traffic. Doug, what's this? This is a sanitizing station, and it works. Looky right there. We have these placed throughout the foyer, so we want to encourage you to use these so that we can all have clean hands and clean hearts. Absolutely. Okay, right. where are we going now? As you come in, the first thing that you will see on your left is communion supplies. And these are spaced out to where you only need to touch one. And I'm going to show you the way to use these. First thing you do is there's a little plastic flap here. And you peel that up. And there is the bread. And you will have an opportunity to partake of that with everyone here. And then there will be a prayer. And then you will peel the second flap. And then there is the fruit of the vine. And so these will be available as you walk in. And then on the end of the table Hold is something that. else maybe you haven't seen. At every door. And there's three of these. Yes. At every entrance of the auditorium, at the back of the auditorium, not only will we have the uh, communion supplies, we will also have collection boxes available for you so that as you enter in, if you would like to make your contribution at that, this point, you may do so at one of these doors. Yes, and you can drop that in coming and going. Coming and going and or going, going or, or. Either one. Yeah, yes. you can do it both ways. It's cool. Yes. So you might notice that this room is rather large. Uh, the capacity of our auditorium is 1,000, 
Two hundred. What is it, Doug? One thousand two hundred and fifty-six. Yes. One thousand two hundred fifty-six. So, uh, <laughs> with the ten percent rules, Thanks, man. Yes. that means that we are saying that we can see one hundred twenty-five in this building legally. You will notice that the pro that the pews are socially distanced. You will notice that there is a six foot gap between them, but there are some what we like to call a duplex. So this is what we call a duplex. This is intended for a single family unit. So if you have a family of four or five and you need two, this is for you. If you're coming with just two or three of you and you live in the same home, then the single one is for you. So Doug, you and I, Cannot share this pew. That's right. Nor can we share this pew. That's right. Because we don't live together. Yeah. So I'm going to take my double pew because I have a large family. And in, anybody who comes that has a, a smaller family, we encourage you to use the, the singles. Yes. And if we do have more than 125 here, the overflow will be in the quads and we will pipe that in through the TV and we will have sound and, and video in there. So you're already in the building, you've parked, you've sanitized, you have your mask on, you've located your new favorite pew, but just to let you know about some of the other areas of the building, the basement, the kitchen, the launch pad, and all the classrooms, they're going to be closed. So obviously the hallways are open so you can get in and out. This hallway has the bathrooms over there, but otherwise uh, we're keeping everything else closed. The nursery will, the nursery room will be open, but it won't be staffed. So if there's a reason that you need to go in there with your little one, you may do so, but it's not going to be staffed, so it's not going to be what we normally drop off kids. Uh, additionally, there will not be coffee pots available. There will be no coffee. The the water pitcher, all of those things are gone. If you won't, if you want coffee, you may bring your own. We are happy for you to do that. But the coffee pots and everything are out of the building for right now. That's right. Also, at, we'll have a service that's pretty similar to what you've seen the last several weeks, except we'll have people gathering here with us. But we are reserving uh, communion. Uh, to till the very end of the service and that way you don't have to worry about what am I going to do with this the, the little container and whatnot and so at the very end of service after the sermon and everything we'll have communion we'll take it together and then as you're leaving you can dispose of your uh, empty communion container at that point yes absolutely uh, the front of our building Many of you could have gone here for years and you may never have known that there were doors behind those mini blinds. We will, blinds. We will allow you to exit through those doors if you so choose. There is a place to make a contribution there as well. There is also a place to uh, place your communion cups after you have used them. And that is on uh, both sides of the auditorium. The south and the north. Also, just a reminder that after the communion is done and after we have uh, had the closing prayer, there will be no Bible classes. So we will have just our service and we'll be excited to do it. And so we hope you're re ready to regather with us. Yes. We know we have hit you with a lot of changes we're trying to keep you safe. We're trying to tell you we love you. But really, we want to keep the focus on worshiping our Lord and our Savior. And so hopefully we all can, can adjust to these things very, very quickly and really just turn our hearts and minds to the whole purpose for why we're here.